What's going on everybody C4 here welcome back to the channel for yet another episode of the spin the wheel rebuild Madden 20 challenge. I'm, I'm actually having a blast doing these uh, Nice little mix up for my regular rebuilds and you know our regular bucks franchise and the Miami franchise and pink slips I feel like it's just a it's a new medium to try and and, and, and add challenge to ourselves when it comes to uh, How we rebuild and, and, and it's just how we what we do what can we really do can we flex our muscles in a Madden rebuild, how good are we really? Well, let's let's do something like this. And today, we're doing something a little bit different. As you can see on this wheel, this is our entire starting lineup. You see a quarterback, two running backs, two safeties, special teamers, three linebackers. You're going, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Well, I told you that I am going to try and use the top community suggested um, ideas in my video uh, comments. And this one here was a great one, especially given it's the season. And it's not just Christmas season, but it's the college bowl season. It's college football playoff season. And this user suggested that we build our entire team. So as you can see by this widget, based upon conference. So we have SEC, we have all the power fives, SEC, Pac-12, Big 10, Big 12, ACC. And there's a widget here that's non-power five. So that'll be like your Sun Belts, your Mountain West and FCS. So how it's gonna work is we're gonna spin a wheel to find out what position we're gonna be picking. So hypothetically speaking, say we land on quarterback and then we go SEC. That means when we build our team, we have our chance to pick. We have to pick our own players here. That's gonna be maybe where things could get a little cheesy, but we have to make our quarterback, our starting quarterback for this rebuild has to be from the SEC conference, so on and so forth. We go to wide receiver, that's four. So if all four wide receivers and say we get non-power five FCS. So we're gonna have to build our wide receiver core for players that did not attend any power five schools. So, so on and so forth. That is how we are going to build our team. And I think that this is gonna give us a pretty interesting mashup of players and trying to win within a five year rebuild. So let's get right into things with our first wheel spin. The first position group that we're gonna address is gonna be corner. We have to pick four corners looking at the conferences. I think Big Ten getting some Ohio State corners would be pretty good. SEC would be really good. I think to uh, to a lesser extent, you're probably not going to want Big 12, Pac-12, you know, non P5. But let's just see what we have to do. So for our corners, great. Big 12. Does Texas and Oklahoma have good corners? Probably not. But our four corners for this rebuild have to be from the Big 12 Conference. So I've already said, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sift through all of them and show you my shortlist. Now these doesn't necessarily have to be the four highest corners that come from the Big 12. I literally just gotta make my team from Big 12 corners. So here are gonna be my selections. First up, we're gonna use Chris Harris Jr. from Kansas. Good playmaker, but it's a five year rebuild. He is 30. So I did think about that when it came to the second highest rated Big 12 corner. And that is just down here a little bit. And that's Aqib Tlaib. Aqib Tlaib, he's 33. He's already banged up. So I'm going to, unfortunately, I'm going to pass from him. I don't want a bunch of old corners. But staying with Miami, Xavier Howard from Baylor is probably the best get that we're going to get as a Big 12 corner. 26, 82 overall with a superstar dev. He is hurt. And because Madden is so stupid, I'm going to have to trade for him in a franchise mode, which is, ah, uh, it's going to be, hmm. It's gonna be dumb. That's gonna be dumb. So I, I'm gonna, probably gonna have this in run of this scenario a couple times. It's what happens when you try to do Madden things near the end of the Madden cycle with the updated roster. So we'll probably just pick a team and then we'll have to use, I'll probably pick one of the best teams so that's easy for me to make these trades so I don't have to lose a lot of draft picks. But either way, uh, next up, I don't know where he is, but Jason Verrett from TCU is another one, but he's banged up, he's hurt. And he's not really that good at 28. So we're gonna pass that and we're gonna get corner three is actually gonna be Trey Flowers. From Oklahoma State, he's 24 years old, 78, 6'3", 203, with 90 speed. And then I'm going to finish up. There's a huge drop, a huge gap in player level. But he's a guy that I had, this guy here, I have seen him grow and develop quite a bit in franchise modes. And our fourth and final corner is going to be Holton Hill out of Texas, 22, 71 overall. So that's Chris Harris Jr., Xavier Howard, Trey Flowers, and Holton Hill to start our cornerback room. All right, next position up for grabs here in the college conference rebuild. And it is going to be our linebacking group. Again, we want to be looking at conferences that have, you know, really it's SEC is where we want to go. I wouldn't actually hate the Pac-12 in this scenario, but for linebackers, I'm not going to lie. For most of these spins, we want SEC. We got SEC. Our linebackers are going to be sick. 
All right, so now we're going to be looking at our three SEC linebackers. Here's where I'm going to bend the rules, cheese it just a little bit, but I'm also going to disadvantage myself right off the rip. I just said three linebackers because because I scheme. I don't know if I'm going to run a 3-4 or a 4-3, but that's where there gets a little bit of you know middle ground. Now, I'm not going to take an outside linebacker and make a D-end, even though that's clearly what they'd be in a 4-3 scheme, but I'm going to get a little bit flexible when it comes to linebackers. So right off the rip, the best SEC linebacker would be Von Miller, but I'm going to veto the right of bringing in a Von Miller because I want my three linebackers, regardless of their left, middle, or right outside linebacker, to best suit a 4-3 team. So here are my three linebackers that I'm going to pick. First up it is going to be Deion Jones from LSU. And I mean, look, we're going to pass some good ones here. CJ Mosley went Alabama. You got Avery Williamson from Kentucky. But I'm going to go Roquan Smith as my second linebacker. And then my third linebacker, no, I mean, Bernard McKinney seems fairly interesting. You know, veteran like Danny Trevathan, no, 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 no. Oh, even Rashawn Evans, nice linebacker there out of Alabama. But I am going to make my final linebacker for my squad, Devin White from LSU. So just like that, those are it. We're, we're passing a lot of top talent. We're going with a little bit of strategy. But also, there's going to be a downswing to the strategy because a lot of these guys got to get paid at the same time. Roquan and Devin White. You know, there's going to be a chance come year four, year five, we're not going to be able to re-sign them. So there is that gamble going with a young player that's going to get a huge contract down the line versus getting maybe someone more reasonable, more affordable. Maybe this will come back to bite us, but a Deion Jones, Roquan Smith, Devin White linebacking core. That's just something I want to see, so that's why I'm doing it. All right, next positional group, please, Mr. Wheel Decide. And it is going to be the tight end position. I literally don't know off the top of my head what conference would be best. AC, probably maybe even Pac-12. Okay, get some Stanford tight ends here. Zach Ertz, we probably coming for you. All right, so for tight end, there's a lot of options for us to go. And again, I'm trying to consider salary cap implications just a little bit. But there's no way we can get Pac-12 tight ends and not make Zach Ertz one of the two. But we're not going to double up with Zach Ertz and Austin Hooper. I feel like Hooper's going to get a bigger contract than Zach Ertz down the road. He's actually in a contract here. He's usually one of the top free agents because Atlanta, in-game, the AI can't negotiate a brand new deal with him. So we're going to deal with that. Will Disley, the uh, the tight end here from the, uh, the, the Seahawks, looks good. But, of course, he's banged up, and we'd have to trade for him. And that's actually going to be fairly difficult to have a bunch of banged up players that we have to try to trade for. We already have to do that with Xavier and Howard. I don't want to have to do that for like every single position. So even though I would technically probably go there, if I had to, we're going to make our second tight end a man that we actually had a lot of success with anytime we've used the Cincinnati Bengals. And that is their rookie tight end out of Washington, Drew Sample. Next, the wheel spin, please. And it is going to be looking at the running back position where we get our two starters. Ideally, we can get a nice combination, a power running back with a receiving running back. And that looks pretty damn good to me, the SEC. So for our running backs, we're going to use a little bit of strategy here yet again, because there's a lot of top running backs that are very appealing from the SEC. Alvin Kamara, we got Nick Chubb, Todd Gurley, Derrick Henry, but I'm going to go try to, you know, with a budget kind of strategy here so we're gonna get josh jacobs because he's on a rookie deal plus he's very good 21 85 overall i don't i think he just has like a regular dev trait though just star so that's nothing crazy and then we're gonna make his partner in crime in this backfield another affordable running back darius geis from lsu and the redskins okay another position group one more done i mean now we gotta start thinking now we're building this team up contracts like i don't want to just get all these guys and then year two year three the rebuild they're gone because i have no way to pay them so we gotta do some strategy so we got defensive end and we're gonna be looking at the oh non-power five fcs level players so non-power five there's some big names that we're gonna pass over tank lawrence from boise state you got akeem hicks from regina I, this is not the best like step on to it not a scheme fit we could side these guys to de-tackle. Maybe I would consider it. But for right now, we need four, three defensive ends. And we're going to try and go a little bit more on the budget side here. So our first defensive end is going to be from the New Orleans Saints. And that's going to be Marcus Davenport, 2277. And we're going to follow that up with Max Crosby, breakout rookie here for the Oakland Raiders out of Eastern Michigan. Mr. Wheel, please give me our next positional group. And it is going to be our two starting safeties. Strong and free, big and proud, bold and beautiful, big 
10. So I actually thought there was going to be more options here for a big 10 safeties than what there actually was. Um, I mean, you got you know, McCordy up there. You got to take a look here at, um, you know, it was a tough call between Malik Hooker and really the guy we ultimately settled on. This is more so just maybe a little bit of my bias from back this draft because he was such a fan favorite, but I have yet to really use him in a rebuild. So we're going to be selecting Darnell Savage, the rookie out of Maryland, as our free safety. And then at strong safety, you start getting some, you know, Adrian Amos, Malcolm Jenkins. They look, they, oh, geez, those are some big time plays. But they're also very expensive players. And I don't think I want to burn one of my big expensive spots here on a safety when you have someone like this. Jabril Peppers out of Michigan, 2379. He will also make up our safety core of Jabril Peppers and Darnell Savage. All name safety squad? I think so. Nice. Let's go take me home. Special teamers. Who I'm literally going with the cheapest options possible for our special teamers. ACC. Good. A lot of Florida State special teamers. Probably going to get Roberto Aguayo. So for our kicker, we're going to go Joey Sly out of Virginia Tech. Mainly because he's jacked and he has a lot of kick power. I think it's 97. Something ridiculous off the charts like that. Let me see what the, come on, come on. 98 kick power. So yes, we're getting Joey Sly out of Virginia Tech. And then for our punter, literally I'm going with the cheapest option at punter. And shout out to Pink Slips. Was it Pink Slips or something? We had Vogel on one of our one of our franchises. He was a monster and he's going to be our punter. Getting down to the nitty gritty for our positions here. Wide receiver, quarterback defensive tackles and finally we're gonna get arguably the most important position for a rebuild the quarterback spot and it ah oh. we have ah. can i use custom draft class so i can get Tua? we have to get an sec quarterback that's literally the worst spot on this wheel so if we're quarter oh, of course it would land on sec um so we got Dak would be the best, but again, he needs to get paid right away. And I'm not, I'm not about paying Dak Prescott big money. Stafford has a massive contract. Cam Newton has a pretty big contract, and he's 30. So I was like, man, this is just Tannehill. I mean, he is having a resurgence right now with the Tennessee Titans. That's not a great fit. So what we're going to do is actually, it's kind of fresh in our minds because we just did this rebuild for our five-year rebuild. But we're going to go Drew Locke from Missouri. It's, it's a low risk. If he plays like he did for us in our Denver Broncos rebuild, fine. If not, it's not a long-term commitment. And we can look at drafting a quarterback, uh, you know, you know, fairly easy. And I, you know what I'm thinking? I'm, I have all this stuff written down. We should keep these parameters for how we draft. Like, I can only draft SEC quarterbacks. I can only, you know what I'm saying? Whatever parameters we have for our position groups are going to carry over into the rebuild for where we draft our players. But Drew Locke, you are our starting quarterback. Only three positional groups left. D-tackle, wide receiver, offensive line. And there we go. We get to build up our O-line. This is, again, strategy needs to come in, especially for salaries, because this is going to be five players. And Big Ten. You probably could. Big Ten, Big 12, probably where you want to look for offensive linemen. I'm, I'm content with Big Ten O-linemen. Offensive line, we have plenty of options here. I, I'm trying to be strategic. There's just really a big gap between the best players and then just literally anyone else at this position. So it's going to be fairly expensive offensive line. But at left tackle, we're going to go Taylor Luan out of Michigan, 28-82. At left guard, our starting guard is good. We're going to go a little bit budget. We could have went normal here from Ohio State, but you get a big contract on the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we are actually going to go with James Daniels, the guard from Iowa. At center, we're going expensive. It's going to be Travis Frederick from Wisconsin. At right guard, we are going to be taking a look at a veteran. It's about time we get someone over the age of 30. Sheriff's going to be expensive, so we're going to go Marshall Yonda just on like a one or two year deal, however long he's going to remain in the league. And finish up at right tackle, we'll go big time expensive. He's cheap right now, but he's going to get a massive deal, and that is Ryan Ramchick from the New Orleans Saints. All right, two positions left, D-tackle, wide receiver, and we're going to get our D-tackle. We're going to get a D-tackle on, again, probably SECs where you'd want to go. And okay, non power five. I'm sure Baltimore has like a dozen of these guys we could pick from. So for non power five, it's top heavy yet again. You got Michael Pierce, Snacks, Harrison. He'll be potential options. Linval Joseph from ECU. But we're going to go a little bit budget here. And we're also going to get one of my favorite players in the game. So Ed Oliver, clearly going from Houston, the AAC. He's going to be first off the board as a selection. And then we're going to go a little bit budget because I'm already starting to think. 
that like I'm thinking I'm doing a good job. I think I'm being cost, you know, cost efficiency is at high, but it's probably not. So I'm gonna finish up with Tristan Hill, the rookie from the Dallas Cowboys. And then we don't even need a spell. I mean, it's wide receiver. I guess we'll give it the spin it deserves. We get to pick our four wide receivers, our X, Y, Z slot, all that stuff. And they're gonna come from, oh no, non-power five FC. Well, this would be good when it comes to the rules that we can only draft players because for whatever reason, wide receivers always come from like community colleges in Madden, in Madden draft. So let's, let's finish this one out. So I guess getting non-power five wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be at wide receiver. But again, I'm just thinking I'm screwing myself with the salary cap. So I'm not going to jump at a Tyree Kill or an Antonio Brown. Uh, you got Devontae Adams, Fresno State. You could even go look at Adam Thielen, Minnesota State. We're going to go a little bit below that. We're going to get a couple good players. We're going to mix and match. So first up, we're going to have Cooper Cup out of Eastern Washington. He's a superstar dev. We're going to follow it up with Kenny Galladay out of Northern Illinois. That's going to be the top end of our wide receivers then i decided we gotta get some cheap guys we gotta get some guys that are gonna be here for four years on a rookie deal so we're gonna you know pair with those two we're gonna pair uh where is it? andy isabella from umass get that speed 22 71 looks pretty damn good and then we're also gonna get a very young talented playmaker from the pittsburgh steelers deontay johnson from toledo Okay, that was, that took a while. That took a while to make this roster, but here we are. We're at 83 overall, 85 offense, 81 defense. That's like a, like, you know, an above average starting spot here for a franchise. Then again, with some of this roster, it, it's balanced though. We, we do have maybe a little bit more youth than you would see on a traditional rebuild, but there are a lot of old players that we need to worry about. So the quarterback spot with Drew Locke, if we don't strike fire like we did in that Denver Broncos rebuild, we're probably going to need to find a quarterback. And I actually went through, made sure every death player fit the requirements, the parameters that we fit on the spin the wheel. We have Josh Jacobs, Darius Geis at running back. We didn't really have anything for fullback. So we have Burton on the roster, but technically I'll just probably put one of these running backs at fullback. Wide receiver, we got Cooper Cup, Kenny Galladay, Deontay Johnson, Taewon Taylor, Andy Isabella, Trey Quinn, tight end Zachary, True Sample, Farrell Brown. We got Taylor Luan, James Daniels, Frederick, Yonda, and Ramchek on the offensive line. Defensive ends, Marcus Davenport and Max Crosby. D-tackle at Oliver Tristan Hill. Leather side linebacker, we got Roquan, Dion, and Devin. Corners, Chris Harris, Xavier Howard, Trey Flowers, Holton Hill. Free safety, Darnell Savage. Strong safety, Jabril Peppers, Sly, and Vogel make up the special teams. So let's get into year, five, year one of a five-year rebuild with the Redskins all made up based upon conference. So coming out of our week 10 bye here in year one, we're not that hot. Three and six, which I mean, in today's real life NFC, that's not that bad. That's not a bad spot to be, but that's still, again, you, you know, we're only going to go, probably go as far as our quarterback will take us. And Drew Locke is not playing terrible. Definitely not playing amazing. Contracts, oh boy. Okay. Well, it's interesting that really only, I mean, two starters. I will try to retain them. So we'll get Joey Sly here, and you might as well, I mean, for one year, who else are we going to spend that money on, right? Might as well retain Chris Harris for one more year, even though that's probably going to take upwards of $16 million, which is very expensive. At the end of year one, we did not make the playoffs. We were seventh, second in the NFC East, though. Um, I mean, given the build of this roster, it wasn't top-heavy enough with, like, old players and stuff like that that we had to win year one. I think we probably still have, like, a two-year window before contracts get... A little too out of hand, but 7-9 for a team of our caliber. A little disappointing, but Drew Locke, fine. Almost 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, 11 picks as a rookie, 66% completion percentage. Again, it's one of those things I can't even say, you know, oh, we can get our quarterback in the draft. or Because we, we have to keep the same parameters. Like, if we want to bring in a quarterback, he has to be from the SEC. So, I don't know. Drew Locke most likely is going to be our guy, but he hasn't developed nearly as well as he did in our Broncos rebuild, which is... Kind of annoying. Josh Jacobs, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, 607 for Darius Geis. That's pretty good. Even Joe Locke chipping in with three touchdowns. Zach Ertz had a rushing touchdown. Cooper Cup led the team with 870 yards, five touchdowns, 780 and eight for Galladay, 730 and three for Ertz, almost 706 for Isabella, 500 yards at the backfield for Josh Jacobs. Defensively, Deion Jones, 106 tackles, and White just both tackle machines. Six and a half sacks, Crosby, six and a half for Davenport, three picks, Jabril Peppers. So sacks could be higher, interceptions. I mean, given our secondary, I guess that's acceptable. Quick look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Lamar Jackson. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot 
of Washington Redskins on this list, but we'll just go through here and see. Okay, Deion Jones, number nine for Demons Play of the Year. Offensive rookie, they went to Kyler Murray, Drew Locke at two, Josh Jacobs at three, Isabella at nine. Defense rookie, they went to Tavai. Man, a couple Detroit Lions there beating out Devin White, who came in at three, Ed Oliver at six, Max Crosby at eight. And for the individual awards, we have no one. So year one's in the books. So let's have a quick turnaround and get into year two. But I'm going to be very, very... Um, I don't know what to expect for this draft and these rules we have set for ourselves. All right, so this is the downfall of just having it like auto scout because I couldn't actually go for players. Like I just scouted who they scouted, not necessarily fitting our parameters. So that kind of double put us in a hole here. But these are the guys that I have been able to find that kind of fit what we're looking for. Um, I mean, we pick at 14. You definitely would like, I mean, we got here Riley McGee at a Texas A&M second round talent. He looks fine. But I think one of these wide receivers in the second round, when you look at the first round, where can we get better? We didn't get enough sacks between Max Crosby. So I think Joel Woodard, the outside linebacker here from Ole Miss, he's probably going to be your pick. The combine's not amazing. You look at this tackle, Martin McGill from Michigan State. He looks pretty damn good with the high bench press, but there's also UDFA Jimmy Edmond that I think could be as good. So at least like we can get a, we can get a tackle here in Edmond, but we can't get an edge if we pass on Woodard. So we're going to get Joel Woodard from Ole Miss. Make him a defensive end. He's an end in our scheme anyways. And he's probably coming low 70s. There we go. 73 with a hidden dev trade. Number 18 in true talent. Stats look pretty good, man. Across the board. Nice pick. And then out of nowhere with the non-power 5D tackle. We didn't even have a second round pick. So in the third round, we got Julius Kuhl. We we'll go Kuhl. It's Kuhl. From USF. 70 with a hidden dev trade. 88 strength. Nice. Obviously, with all these parameters, it's always going to be tough to use our draft picks the you know the most of their ability and we did pretty well uh in the first round we got that water guys you saw and cool uh, and then to finish out we just had you know we traded a bunch of our picks to future years but we got jatavius adams left guard from wisconsin 69 overall i thought he was gonna not be great because he didn't even have 32 on the bench press but he turned out to be a pretty good pick and then we just straight up needed another corner and we got dallas bell out of kansas 64 overall i'll take that for a death move year two and we're an 88 overall very nice looking roster, top to bottom. So at quarterback, we got Drew Locke right in the ship. There's no changes whatsoever. In terms of development, though, Josh Jacobs is almost into the 90s. I expect Cooper Cup and Kenny Galladay both to get into the 90s. You look at the offensive line, you know, it's still pretty damn good. Not really seeing any regression yet out of Luan or Frederick as they are the old heads. And, and obviously, Zach Ertz on the offense. Flipping to the defense. Uh, in terms of dev traits, I don't think we had anything, but we got a superstar in Ed Oliver because he was hidden, but we kind of knew he was a superstar at that point. Um, Devin White, superstar X Factor. I mean, it's good. And we got Chris Harris, who actually didn't want to extend a contract. He's playing on the franchise tag right now. But uh, generally speaking, I, I kind of like where we're going. We'll take Woodard, and we'll put him to the position that we best want him. We'll just make him a left end for now. Uh, I don't know if he's ever actually even going to start over Max Crosby or... Davenport but again it's just more so in case contracts go sour we have him on this roster for the remainder of the rebuild just over midway here in year two we're four and four still struggling to put it all together to see the Giants those damn New York Giants undefeated let's actually see if we can beat them this week and then we'll look at our contracts let me knock off the Giants and I've, hey, we, we kept it kind of close but we were unable to uh, we'll upgrade our players here very quick as we look at the contracts Ryan Ramchick oh he's gonna get paid a lot of money uh, so first off, he has to get paid, though, over five years. He's a franchise player. And we got him locked up. Cooper Cup, definitely, I think he takes uh, more priority over someone, you know, an aging veteran like Chris Harris. Kenny Galladay, another young player. That's, oh, that's 10 mil a year. We got Jabril Peppers. That's a little bit more reasonable, especially a $5 million cap. It. We could definitely make that work. Holton Hills, fairly affordable here, too. Let's actually give him a five-year deal. Five-year, 18 mil. Um, I mean, Ruben Foster, you know, he wasn't even someone we selected. He was just on the base Redskins roster. I mean, that's also not a bad deal at all. But we don't really have the kind of money to be signing depth players, you know, crazy like that. Uh, we'll get Vogel back on a one-year deal if he'll take it, which he will. Uh, Sly, let's just give him a big year. Let's give him a big contract. Five years, Sure. You're going to be our kicker for the rest of the rebuild. So that gives us, we got Chris Harris who wants another one-year deal. We got Jabril Peppers. We'll definitely go with Peppers. 
We'll see if Chris Harris takes this. If not, I'm not giving him the tag again. He can kiss my ass. There we go. We got him locked up. We'll come back and renegotiate with Jabril Peppers. We won, literally, I want to see this. I felt like we literally won like six of our last seven to make the playoffs out of nowhere. Let's look at our team schedule here. Reds can see like, hey, you know, it's, it's pretty crappy. And then this is where we talked. And then from there, one, two, three, four, five, six of our last seven, we were able to somehow win and get 10 and six and right out the bat, see who the best team is in the NFC East. Team's looking pretty good, 89 overall. Uh, in terms of dev traits, I don't think we had anyone gain any dev traits on the offense. I wasn't even getting scenarios. On the defense, we did get one. Roquan Smith went from star to superstar, which he probably should have had anyways. Um, well, we got all the contracts. We got Jabril Peppers all locked up. So we're looking pretty good from that standpoint. And just FYI, we're probably almost never going to sign any free agents in free agency so we can keep this roster intact as long as possible. Drew Locke, that's not that great of a year. Regress, 3,600 yards, 28 touchdowns, 15 picks. Running game on point between Josh Jacobs and Darius Geis. And for some reason, Drew Sample, who I'm going to guess was our fullback, got five touchdowns. Uh, Cooper Cup, big year, 78 catches, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Actually, now that I think about it, he did have a superstar X-Factor scenario, but we're simming, and, you know, I didn't really feel like hopping in to get him that. My bad. Uh, 850 and 5 for Galladay, almost 660 and 6 for Zach Ertz. Isabella was fine. Defensively, Devin White, big year. 103 tackles, 10 TFLs, 8.5 sacks. 8.5 sacks for Roquan. 8 for Ed Oliver, as well as 15 TFLs. 2 picks. Savage definitely want to see the interceptions up. Yearly awards MVP went to Christian McCaffrey. Any Washington Redskins? Nothing for offense. For defensive player of the year, Devin White coming in at 10. Offensive rookie. Defensive rookie. Uh, cool and Woodard, 8 and 9. I don't think we had any individual award winners, which we did not, but we made the playoffs, which is the most important. And in the first round, we knock off the division winning New York football giants, 31 to 28. Okay. How did that happen? 31, who showed up? Was it Drew Locke? Drew, oh, they had luck, but Drew Locke did just, I assume our run game went off. There we go, three touchdowns between Geis and Josh Jacobs. Cooper Cup had a touchdown. Deion Jones all over the field. We had no turnovers. That was just our run game. The New York Giants, they're, they're too soft. That front seven's too soft to handle this run game. Now we got the 12 and 4 Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers in town. And we knocked them off. 34 to 28. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing one hell of a run, which can only end in a disappointing loss to the Falcons and not giving us something potentially exciting, making a Super Bowl. With a, uh, a team, Drew Lock four touchdowns, one interception on the day. Galladay dominated. Do Galladay and Cooper Cup had huge games. 11 tackles, Xavier Howard. Still no turnovers or interceptions. But we're getting it done with the offense. So now we play the 12-4 and four foul. I mean, okay, they're 12-4. and four. I'm actually, I'll take that back. That's a tough matchup. If we don't win, I'm not going to be super salty. But I definitely hope we can make the Super Bowl, which we did. 34-18. to 18. We are heading to the Super Bowl to take on the Baltimore Ravens. You better believe I'm going to be hopping in for that one. Because this is a team that I think has a, a very short window. Like, I thought I thought year three was probably going to be the big all or nothing year. But I guess we're trying to go for it here in year uh, two. 34 to 18, we knock off the Atlanta Falcons on the day. Drew Locke, clean, no turnovers. The run game got us four touchdowns between Jacobs and Darius Geis. Cooper Cup, five catches, 122 yards, and a tutty. Trey Flowers, we got a couple sacks here. Finally, Ed Oliver, Roquan, and Devin White. Three picks, Devin White, Flowers, and Xavier Howard as the Redskins have punched their ticket to the Super Bowl. But what is standing in front of them is Lamar Jackson and the 12-4 Baltimore Ravens. Let's get it. Oh, let's go, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, the only player on this squad with real Super Bowl experience, makes the big catch first in goal. I think, I think there's a C4 special coming up. Oh no, it's just it's been a while. Let's let's pay homage to the Raiders franchise. It's been a while since we've had a disappointing Josh Jacobs C4 special, but it gets blocked up excellently by a great front offensive line as the Redskins take the opening score here in the Super Bowl. Fourth and two, I'm going for it because I don't I don't care because we got Zach Ertz, who's just automatic chain mover. Third and ten in the red zone. I like Josh Jacobs out the backfield a whole lot. He can catch two, ladies and gentlemen. His second touchdown of the Super Bowl. Redskins up 14-zip. 
Oh, okay, Darius Geis. A little bit of juice there. Come on, baby. Let's go. Ready to break. Here we go, here we go. All right, I'm going to try to call in my one token. I can run a slants play. Right here in the red zone, Andy Isabella. 21-3 Redskins. Let's say we could probably sim this one out, ladies and gentlemen, and secure our Super Bowl in only year two of the college football conference spin the wheel rebuild of the Washington Redskins. And not only did we win the Super Bowl, I don't know what that is, Super Bowl three for the Washington Redskins franchise, but we beat Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson entering Michael Vick, Madden 04 territory, and the sim helped us out. The sim got the job done. You see Harbaugh, Jay Gruden, who's not even there anymore. But Lamar Jackson, he's pretty sad. He's just, that's a sad Lamar Jackson. But what we have to say to him, it's too bad you didn't play in the SEC, or else you probably would have been our quarterback, but we won it with Drew Locke, baby. It's like Drew Locke week here on the channel. We did the Denver Broncos rebuild with Drew Locke. And now, did we even get a Super Bowl in that rebuild? Mm, I don't think we I don't think we did. That might have been an L. An L of a rebuild. So hey, at least we're able to put one here all together. And that was one hell of a run. I had no expectations whatsoever, especially as a as like the low, like I think actually the worst. NFC wildcard seed, but that's the Madden Sim for you. You come in as the worst seed and you still win the Super Bowl. Josh Jacobs gets Super Bowl MVP, 142 yards and a touchdown on the day. That SEC backfield of him and Darius guys definitely were the, the deciding factor, I think. Uh, it really was an SEC entire backfield, including Drew Locke. Uh, but let's hoist that Super Bowl. Let's get this out. Let's try to get a dynasty and see if this is just the first of at least three more Super Bowls as we get ready for year number three. Draft recap time as we go to year three. Stay with the same parameters. Pretty much we have to go like best player available that fits our school requirements. So we got John Merritt in the first round, DN out of Wyoming. Our, our, our DN requirement was non-power five. So he looks, he looks fairly solid. Uh, we got Jermaine Stuckey, wide receiver from Rice. Again, non-power five for a wide receiver. Uh, none power five for D tackle actually got a really good value here in Earl Rutland 67 hidden dev out of Notre Dame uh, Fourth round here. We had to get big ten. We got Keenan Watson tackle for Michigan State This is our, our next best pick Sean Horn 63 hidden dev corner from Indiana our safety story From Indiana our safeties have to be from the big ten and he looks pretty damn good Now than that we've pretty much fitted ourselves the draft here with everyone in the 60s Which is all you can pretty much ask for we kick off year three trying to defend our Super Bowl title. Our team's overall pretty much stays the same as an 88. Uh, in terms of dev traits or, or big growths that we don't need to get checked out from our doctors, Cooper Cup is up to a superstar X Factor. Other than that, no dev traits to be had on the offense. Uh, Marsha Yonda, obviously retired. Uh, Luan starting to regress just a teeny little bit there. And Drew Locke, no dev traits, nothing like that. But he's almost an 80 overall. And he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. When you look at the defense... Uh, I don't think we had any dev traits gained, but uh, the team is all is generally because like you know there are you know that peak age developing uh, fairly acceptable. Oh, cool came out, that's good. That's actually pretty damn good right there. That he's up to an 80. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's it's a solid looking team here, top to bottom. I, I feel comfortable that we could at least make the playoffs and go on a run. Coming out of the bye here in year three, we're four and four. 500 is. You know, not where I expected us to be tied for last in the NFC East. Okay. Um, contracts, I've kind of let the depth guys not, you know, they're not, if they're not playing, it's just going to take way too much time to keep the roster management where it is. If you're at the bottom of the depth chart, I'm not going to worry if you, if you meet the parameters or not. Um, all right. So contracts, players we want for sure. We definitely want Trey Flowers. Uh Corners, generally speaking, younger corners, the better. Davenport's developed fairly nice for us as a defensive end, even though he's not getting a whole lot of sacks. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely look at retaining him. James Daniels on the offensive line. Give him a five-year deal. Roquan, for sure. That is a lot of money for you. And it's pro we're probably going to have to move on from Zach Ertz. That's just so much money for a guy that's going to start to regress. Chris Harris, too old. Darius Geis, you know, we don't really need two running backs in a sim. So, I mean, maybe we'll come back for Zachary at the end of the season. But 
generally speaking, you know, we got to start making some tough decisions. At the end of year three, we did not even make the playoffs. Eight and eight. It's just not a good NFC, so you're not Dallas. But eight and eight after winning the Super Bowl, not losing anybody, going from an 88 to a 91. Pretty annoying. Look at the stats. Drew Locke, technically the worst quarterback in the league. 32nd in yards, 32nd in touchdowns. Run the ball. Geis and Jacobs, pretty damn good. Maybe we need to look at bringing back, I don't know. The receivers weren't going to have big years because their quarterback played bad. Even Josh Jacobs, so that's still pretty damn good. Josh Jacobs finishing with 14 touchdowns. You know, 1,600 yards. He's a beast. Devin White, 129 tackles, 16 TFLs, 5 and a half sacks. It's huge. Roquan Smith with 10 sacks. We got four picks, Jabril Peppers. Um, it is kind of annoying. We just paid Marcus Davenport, and he hasn't really done much in the sim. Maybe that was a that was a bad call. Cam Newton's down with New England, but Josh Allen is your MVP in the NFC. I don't think... Oh, okay, I, I definitely think that Josh Jacobs should have made that list. Defense player of the year, Devin White coming in at number three. Offensive rookie of the year, doesn't really matter. Where's he for running back? My God, number six. The disrespect to put him at number six for having double-digit touchdowns, 16. Oh, whatever. What a stupid year. Let's get in year four. But stung losing Zach Ertz, Darius Geist to free agency. But sure, we'll have a draft that can, that, that can replenish with talent. And there was talent, but just not for, you know, the conferences we had to draft for. I pretty much had no scouting after these two. I had three players that looked pretty good. Uh, so I, I was like, all right, maybe we can just take a guess and gamble and, and draft just guys based upon school. Saw that we get a 55. I was like, all right, let's just trade all of our picks. But we got Alfonso Burley from West Virginia. We need uh, big 12 corners. Looks looks fine. And uh, this was actually a really good pick. Trey Coleman on the offensive line, right tackle from Wisconsin. 75 overall, normal dev across the board, a talented player. But, you know, no one really to replace who we lost, especially at running back. There was an like, insane running back, 7-5 grade. I'm gonna actually, I'm going to go see if I can find him to be anticlimactic, but this is the running back I thought that was going to be insane. He was like 230, 442. Uh, you know, I mean, there's definitely something to work with there. He has he has the nice bones of a nice developmental running back, but we actually didn't really miss on any players. So let's get in year four. It was a weak draft. Year four, our team's better than it ever has been. 91 overall base. Uh, no more Zach Ertz. Drew Sample needs to step up. Uh, like I said, I've kind of let our deaf players just just because it's too hard to keep up with it. Uh, you're not you're not playing a snap for us if you don't meet the parameters of uh, of the schools and conferences. But our starter, I mean, 91 offense looks good. We need Drew Locke to do something, not be the worst quarterback in the league. Defense remains pretty much the same. No dev traits inside of Jabril Peppers going from star to a superstar. That linebacking core is unreal. This defense generally is very, very good. But hopefully we can do better than 8-8 eight and, eight and uh, here in year four get back into the playoffs. And three and four midway. Why are we so bad? Does it make sense? Contracts. I have no idea what our salary cap even looks like. But we got Ed Oliver. First and foremost. Want to get him locked up. Five years, 73 mil. Devin White. Oh my god. Oh no. No, 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 no. Okay. Prioritize. Josh Jacobs. Your, be your best player on our offense. So we'll make sure we get you. Darnell Savage's contract is fairly reasonable. That is, I mean, safeties in this game need better agents. For sure they do. Um, we have depth at D-tackle. We've drafted well there. We drafted okay at D-end. So yeah, it has to be kind of Devin White at this stage. And we can't even give him what he wants. Okay then. Uh, we'll go sample for a tight end for simplicity's sake. We don't have to worry about a Pac-12 tight end. Mm-hmm. I guess Max Crosby can get some money. Wants more salary. Isabella's a nice wide receiver. We have so many wide outs. I don't even think we can give him what he wants. Yeah, so we will have to pick and choose. I think ultimately we will give a contract to Max Crosby. Because we're gonna we, there's no way we can pay Devin White that kind of money. Okay, um Max Crosby wants to go to free agency. So, this was really, like, we're going to feel it next year. And we're 92 overall, so the highest we've ever been. And we've already won a Super Bowl. Um, 96 Josh Jacobs, 94. We had 91, 95 in Ramchick. Jane, James Daniels is in the 90s. Ed Oliver's a 97. 
Devin White, nine couple. Oh, and and we finished seven and nine, last place in the NFC East. Drew Lock was not that great. Josh Jacobs was a beast. I'm glad we resigned him. Um, I mean, Devin White played well, well enough that there's no way in hell we're gonna resign him. All my linebackers are getting sacks more than the guy that I paid in Davenport. All right, year five. Nothing makes sense. Year five. All right, so we need to free up $10 million. I was able to get um, Devin White back on a franchise tag, which, I mean, in all honesty, we probably could have had Ruben Foster take over that position, but it's just too much. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to get rid of Taylor Luan, which frees up $7 million in salary because then we can have uh, Trey Coleman, who we drafted well, he could slide over and be our starting left tackle this season. So that's, you know, that's what, only like a two or three point downgrade. That's acceptable for what we would have lost in Roquan Smith. We still need to free up a little bit more Skrilla. I don't know where that can come from. We still need, like, we're searching for two mil. Who can we get rid of to free up $2 million? And I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Forgot, forgot we didn't have a quarterback. Uh, come on, Matt. Come on, Matthew. Do us a solid. So, uh, we got a break. A slight break. But um, we need a quarterback. And there actually seems to be an okay-looking SEC quarterback. Ty Groves from Arkansas. Sure. We have Stidham right now. And he's not even better than Jared Stidham. We might have to go with him. But uh, here we go. So our final draft, again, again, this is what made it really difficult. We had to go within, you know, the same parameters. We got some okay picks. Conway, 65 wide receiver. We got Gaddis from Illinois at safety, 69. Uh, this is like maybe our best value pick, Nazir Smith. We had to get those big 12 corners out of Baylor. 64 hidden dev. You know, kind of filling that pipeline that Xavier and Howard came over. But uh, hey, we, and we actually finally got an ACC special teamer, Garrett Bannon, 68 overall punter. Pretty good. But uh, now we got to figure out if it's going to be Groves. We, I might go with Groves. We have Jared Stidham. So we we kind of swung and miss on Matt Stafford and free agency. Stidham's a 70, but Groves has that whole rookie quarterback. Maybe some sim juice going on. So maybe that'll work out well for us. Here's our team, year five. And it's not a super or bust, which is good because we have Ty Groves. The 69 overall rookie out of Arkansas will be our starter. Uh, other than that, though, I mean, every one of our starters still meets the parameters that we set at the beginning of the rebuild. Cooper Cup, Superstar X Factor, Jacobs has probably been the best player on this team from top to bottom. I do know the Washington Redskins playbook tends to be a little more favorable to running backs. We kept this elite linebacking core together. Ed Oliver's doing his thing. We have got a lot of sacks, though. Ultimately, sacks and turnovers on this defense that's been very good have been few and far between. So let's see the defense match up, carry this offense, carry the young quarterback, and get us into the playoffs. We're probably going to have to sneak in. I mean, does it count as scripting, having that rookie quarterback that, regardless of what round, leads your team to the playoffs almost every single year? It was 68 overall, now he's up to a 75. I mean, when you have the skill position players that we have, it's not a shock. But second place in the NFC East, Groves very good. 3,900 yards, 34 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Josh Jacobs was good. Cooper Cup, 1,100 yards, 13 tutties, 880 and 7 for Galladay. Sample, you know, depending on what your beliefs are, pretty sketchy looking number. 620 and 6 from Josh uh, Josh Jacobs has been the MVP of this rebuild so far. Deion Jones, pretty good year. 17 sacks, Roquan Smith, 12 from Ed Oliver. Hell to the yeah baby Jacoby Brissett is your MVP in the NFC I was playing the one to Ezekiel Elliott defensive player of the year we had Roquan at four offensive rookie of the year went to Ty Groves not shocked individual award winner best wide receivers Cooper Cup as we've made the playoffs and we've already won our Super Bowl and can we go on a run against the eight and eight Panthers that should totally be a winnable game here for our squad and we do knock them off 24 to three outstanding performance from our defense. Let's get a get a little you know, a little sneak peek at that box score here. One hell of a job from that defense. Ty Groves did what he had to do. Was it like raining? Was it a hurricane? Josh Jacobs, 100 yards. Defensively, Devin White, 10 tackles and a sack. Roquan also had a sack. I guess these guys are developing as edge rushers. 
You know, I, I probably had them as a sub linebacker. Or but either way, there we go. We get to find who the best team in the NFC East is. 11 and 5, 11 and 5, Redskins and Giants with the NFC Championship on the line. And we fall 24 to 17. The end of the road, the end of the line for this Washington Redskins spin the wheel rebuild. 24 17 to the New York Giants. And I mean, Andrew Luck, two interceptions on the day. Ty Gross just, you know, didn't do enough. Definitely did not do enough. Uh, Galladay and Sample both had pretty big performances. We had a pick, two picks, Xavier Howard and Darnell Savage. How did the Giants beat us? They ran the ball. Yeah, three touchdowns. Devin Singletary, Saquon Barkley. That is a pretty nice looking defense. Two and a half sacks, Jordan Wills. Um, well, there you go. We still got our Super Bowl. It's still a successful rebuild as this is our final looking squad here. You know, it's uh, it was a good rebuild. It was, this was a good rebuild. We got the Super Bowl. We maintained the, the requirements throughout the entirety. I mean, I guess technically running back two uh, was the only position that didn't fit a requirement. It was running back two. That's definitely, by all definitions, a backup running back. And, um, you know, we got some 99. That's like the best linebacking. The triple, the three-headed monster of Devin White, Roquan Smith, Deion Jones. And you got Ed Oliver, who's a 99. Peppers is a 92. Savage would have got into the 90s. I guess Xavier Howard did peak. But then you look at the offense, 96 for Cooper Cup, 97 Josh Jacobs, James Daniel, 94, Ramchick, 95, Galladay with a 90. It was a good rebuild. This was a successful rebuild. And thank you for uh, suggesting this one. And again, leave those comments. Let me, let me know what type of parameters we can throw into a spin the wheel rebuild to make it very entertaining, exciting, and challenging and everything in between. But thank you for watching today's video. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit, well you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent, I'm doing